This disclaimer was copied without permission. Cheers, quaffers, guzzlers, swingers, sippers, and all other good people out there. Hops watch here, and today we are having. However, first we'll have. So here's a little story about the brewery behind today's brew. The brewery is called Royal Unibrew and it is a conglomerate of the smaller breweries Elbeni, Faxe, Maibo Bryghus and Sears. Yes, I'm pronouncing all those breweries in Danish. Royal Unibrew isn't exactly what you would call a microbrewery or a quality brewery. They are in fact the second largest brewery in Denmark with an annual production of 9.5 million hectoliters. It is of course not much compared to Anheuser-Busch's annual production of 613 million hectoliters, but then again, Denmark is a small country. Now here's the thing. In addition to its industrial production, Royal Unibrew has a number of brands which you could call micro-brews or at least quality brews, such as Lotrup, named after the founder of the Ceres brewery that Royal Unibrew closed down in 2008, Schütz, named after the founder of the Albani brewery that is used for craft brewing by the company today, and Albani Special, the series where today's brew belongs. I'm not particularly impressed with any of these, as aren't people reviewing them on rate beer. As you can see in this graph, the production of quality brews does not take up much of the brewery's total volume. And this is where it gets kind of problematic. Having a company like Royal Unibrew, with its immense capacity flushing out industrial standard craft beer, poses a manifest danger to the actual small craft brewers, since the industrial actors can produce in much larger volumes, at a lower price, and without taking any risks, as the portion that the quality brands take up is only a rather insignificant fraction of the total production of the industrial breweries. Just keep in mind to not always choose the industrial products because they're easy to obtain and cheap. You should also pay regular visits to your local breweries shops and to your local distributor of quality beers. And now that that is all said and done, let's get on to today's industrial quality beer. There it is. And it can be taken directly out of the can as well, if you're out walking or something. Enjoy it chilled, as you should with any IPA. So some of you will maybe notice that I am using a different glass than the first time. The main reason for that uh, is that this is not one of the beers that really deserves to come into that glass. Also, it's too big to fit into the dragon glass. Uh, so I'll have a standard um, half a litre glass for this one. We are in Europe, in mainland Europe, so we don't measure in pints. I like to get it a bit foamy too. Oh. So here we have a, a golden, slightly dark, IPA with some rich foam there, slightly tanned, slightly golden, and as already indicated, a very, very nice odor. Fruity, fruity notes. <sighs> There's some good elderflower sweetness in the odor along with a fairly traditional bitterness of, uh, of the hops. In this case, mosaic gives you a bit of a, a feel of freshly cut light wood, a bit of, a bit of rose, a bit of flower, um, a bit of other flower notes as well. And just a tad, um, a richness of plum 
here comes the, the tasting. Relatively rich and widely aromatic initial flavor. bit of grapefruit notes uh, added adds to the to the general bitterness again of light wood <sighs> a touch of spices there a bit of thyme a bit of rosemary mm. a bit of rose flowers as well At the back of, of your, at the back of the mouth, some of the industrial traits start to show. Um, the, the bitterness gets slightly sticky and gets slightly, slightly crude. There are some notes of yeast there. Even though it's, it's filtered beer, you get a bit of a yeast feel at the back of your mouth. Uh, it's not that it really ruins anything, but it hardly adds character neither. So it's, it's just there to show that this is not top-notch IPA. However, this thing is relatively cheap and you can have it in any quality supermarket here in Denmark. And definitely, if you're going for something that is relatively cheap and you want something a bit more special than just your regular, your regular lager, your regular Pilsner, this would be the thing. It's definitely an enjoyable, a tasty IPA, which you can buy without getting ripped off. So the olive oil trick will work here. Draw in some air over the brew while it's in your mouth and you will be able to draw a, a bit of extra aroma out, out of it to enhance the experience. This is, this is decent beer, definitely. However, the uh, slightly crude industrial uh, aroma um, gains more ground as you as you go ahead um, I'm trying to avoid here uh, saying that it gets worse because it never really gets bad but, but you can feel that there's a, a crudeness to the overall feel of the brew so oh, it's far from perfect and um, it's a bit more heavy uh, in the flavor than as I see it the perfect IPA sh uh, should be the perfect IPA should be really, really crisp and really, really fresh. This is just a tad more heavy, uh, both in the flavor and, and the aroma. Um, I'll give it a solid four out of six. And with that, my recommendation for a cheap industrial IPA, but as I said before, don't forget to pay a visit every now and then to your local brewery or your local craft brew shop. Cheers! Also, links in the description to uh, all my social media. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, I have a blog and I have a YouTube channel, which you might have found out already, I don't know. Always remember to drink responsibly. Until next time, cheers. You should always, oh for fuck's sake. You should always pay regular visits to your... You should also always... Ah, oh, fuck's sake. Local, craft, and... You should always... Ah, oh, fuck's sake. <laughs>